So unfortunately, it's happened to me. I walked into my workshop expecting a successful print of two of my lovely newly released filament samples while I was testing them. But the weird thing is the build plate only had one of them. So I started off by gaslighting myself. I thought, oh, maybe I only printed one. Like, oh, what if I didn't print two? Or what if I accidentally hit skip object? But unfortunately, it turns out there had been a mistake. And I knew something was really wrong when I saw this being spat out of the back of the printer and the rest of the filament sample had been extruded into a blob of death. Now, I've never had to deal with this. When I hear these stories online of blobs of death, I always hoped that it was a super rare thing and that it's not something you should really worry about. But I've recorded my experience so that others can learn from the process I went through and hopefully help you troubleshoot your blobs of death a little bit easier in the future. Luckily, I was able to salvage this and I didn't even have to change any parts. So this uses the same nozzle that caused the problem, even the same silicone sock. So here I'm gonna be showing you my experience and the steps I took to resolve this, and hopefully you can learn something from it. Stick around because at the end of the video, I'll be talking about why this happened, how I could have avoided it, and how I'm changing how I print going forwards to minimize the risk of this happening in the future. So the first thing I did was inspect the damage. So luckily, after I waited for it to cool and after I took the sock off and the front cover, I realized that it wasn't as horrendous as it first looked. So it was a blob of death, but it was mostly around the nozzle and the assembly around the nozzle, a bit of it on the sock. It hadn't gotten to like the fan or the prong things that go around the nozzle. It was constrained just to the nozzle itself. So you should read the official guidance for your printer on dealing with blobs of death. Bamboo have a really useful article on troubleshooting the A1, specifically for blobs of death. They recommend removing the fan and removing that entire assembly to make things easier, but I didn't have to do that because it hadn't got there. The first thing I tried to do was using this set of pliers, just trying to get off little bits of the plastic. And I had a little bit of success, like I was able to get chunks off, but there was still a lot on and there was plastic that was attached too tightly. So I knew I had to heat up the nozzle. So I heated it up to 250 degrees. That's what Bamboo recommends for PLA in this article. It's slightly hotter than the temperature you need for printing with the material. And I was able to get off a lot more of the plastic and actually like the vast majority of it in terms of filament volume, I was able to get off just by heating the nozzle. Now the guidance says that you should put the printer into maintenance mode so that you can heat it up even without a nozzle attached. But I wanted to see whether I could get away without this. For some reason, something felt risky about this maintenance mode. I only wanted to use it if I absolutely had to. I struggled to get the nozzle out, but I did figure out how to do this in the end and it made me feel better seeing the hot end without the nozzle because it really showed that, yeah, the vast majority of the plastic had been removed. Now, when the nozzle is at 250 degrees, the plastic is liquid, which actually makes it quite difficult to take it off because it kind of oozes. And so I went through repeated cycles of cooling it down, waiting like between 80 and 150, where it's still soft, but it comes off in like chunks and it takes more of the plastic with it. I can't remember the exact temperatures that might take some troubleshooting and obviously be safe, don't be touching this with your hands. But I was using these pliers and then by heating and cooling, I was able to get off the vast majority of the filament. I made a mistake here, which I don't want you to repeat. There are some things where I didn't want to use metal because I wanted to be more gentle. So I used these tongs that I printed in PETG carbon fiber. And I thought to myself, oh, like PETG takes a higher temperature, so this will be fine. But actually 250 is like very high. And so I did slightly melt to the end of these tweezers, but luckily it's not too bad and they are still very much usable. But yeah, don't use printed stuff to be getting this off unless you don't mind it melting slightly. So I got really far like this, 
and it got to a point where I thought I had cured it. I thought I'd got all of the plastic off and I couldn't wait to put the nozzle back on and get printing, but I couldn't get the nozzle on. So it felt and it looked like it was in place, but I couldn't quite close the clasps on it, even slightly which told me that it must be misaligned. Now this is really annoying to troubleshoot. I tried to use a new nozzle because I thought maybe for some reason I had wrecked the 0.4 hardened steel nozzle. Maybe if I use like the stock non-hardened steel nozzle that came with the printer, it's clean, there's no gunk on it, maybe that'll fit, but that also didn't fit. So that at least helped me narrow down the problem. I knew that there was something getting in the way and that it wasn't on the nozzle itself. It was on the hot end assembly. But it's annoying because it was really subtle. But what gave me a clue is actually when I stuck either of the nozzles in, they looked like they were roughly in place, but they looked a little bit rotated. So they looked like the, like my right was pointed towards me too much, which gave me a clue that there was gunk underneath on that side. But to fix this, I had to get over my fear of maintenance mode, which I had for some reason. I put it into maintenance mode, which allowed me to heat up the hot end without a nozzle in place. And then I realized that I could put the nozzle in and close the clasps while it was hot. So this confirms to me that there was like subtle bits of plastic blocking it because when it's hot, the plastic moves out of the way and then it makes sense that it fits when it's hot. So I went through more of these cycles of heating, cooling. So with the nozzle in place and the clasps on, I cooled the nozzle, waited for a safe temperature underneath 80. If you're more patient or you have to touch it with your hands, you should wait like much longer. Maybe this is bad of me, like don't copy this, but I was just using these pliers to take the nozzle off and put it back on. It does scratch the heat sink a little bit, so definitely don't do it, but it allowed me to do these cycles of cooling, heating, which allowed me to keep taking these small bits of plastic off. So when it cooled down, removing the nozzle had some cooled plastic on it, and that was really easy to remove. And the plastic inside the hot end had also moved and I could see it for some reason. And so again, it was easier to remove it. I still couldn't put the nozzle on and put the clasps on cold. So I had to repeat this at least once, maybe two more times. And then I was able to put the nozzle back on even when the hot end was cold and I could put the clasps on. So I was really happy with myself, but I wasn't sure if I had wrecked that nozzle and if I had to order a new one. So I started a new print and waited really anxiously to see what happened. But luckily, miraculously, it just worked. So it was able to extrude this clear PETG. Oh, one of the most beautiful sights I ever saw was seeing that orange PLA turn into transparent PETG because it meant that the problem was fixed. And then I've been able to print with this nozzle since with no issues. I might buy one as a spare in case this happens again. I do wreck it. People will tell you the nozzles are consumables, but for now I have fixed it with zero expense. But why did this happen in the first place and what do we learn from it? Now the most annoying mistakes to make are the mistakes that you've already made and you thought you've learned from, but you make them again. It's just bad adhesion, it's always bad adhesion. So after my 13 tips video, I was very good. I regularly scrub my plates with fairy washing up liquid. I avoid touching them as much as possible. I only touch them on the outside, but recently I had been getting complacent. And I say that, it was very recent. It was the same week that this happened, maybe even the day before. I was getting some of these samples off and then instead of using tongs or a scraper or something, I was using my hands and then like the corners of my fingers touched the build plate. I think my hands had also been recently washed. So in my head, I thought if my hands were washed recently, there's less grease on them and it's less likely to cause problems. But that's apparently not the case. You apparently can't touch the build plate with your hands, even if you've just washed your hands, even if it's just like a tiny corner of your finger. Because where this sample was, was exactly where I remembered touching the plate recently. So it's just bad adhesion. What must have happened is, while it was printing the first layer, at some point this fell off 
and like this flew off the printer or maybe this got stuck to the nozzle it started extruding the blob into this and then maybe this fell off later for some reason so how do you avoid this for me it would have been so easy just listen to my own stupid advice and not touch the build plate and i think if you're not touching the build plate you are much less likely to have this problem the thing is because i don't touch the build plate and I have so few adhesion issues. I don't scrub my plate as regularly as I should. So maybe another lesson is to scrub the plate with some washing up liquid. Even if you're not having bad adhesion issues, maybe it prevents them in the first place and you never have this. There's also a lesson here that everyone tells you, but you learn lessons for good when you learn them the hard way, right? I didn't think this was important, but now I know how important this is. Just watch your first layers. So I was lucky and I caught this quickly. Like luckily this was not a lot of filament, but if I had been watching the first layer, I would have seen this thing come off and I would have known instantly that there was a problem. I would have stopped the print and it never would have developed into a blob of death in the first place. Now, the reason that's tricky here is because I like printing these things in by object mode. So I can print with four different colors with just three filament swaps. But the downside is you don't have one first layer. You have a first layer here and then a first layer here, 15, 20 minutes later, and then 30 minutes later, 45 minutes later. And so it's really hard to catch these things. But another lesson there is to not use the by object print mode unless you absolutely have to. So here I was printing two things in orange. I didn't need to use by object. I could have printed by layer. It would have done both of the first layers and I would have caught this instantly. A huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. If you found this helpful and you want to avoid other stupid mistakes that I've made in the future, I'd recommend this 13 tips video where I talk through things I wish I knew before I started 3D printing. Or you can watch my nine stupidest mistakes, which are also tips you can learn from, but they're stupid. They're really stupid, but hopefully I embarrass myself so that you can avoid that same embarrassment.